Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, I told you we will be discussing a number of examples. So, let's get going. Right? Yes. And first of all, let me tell you, uh, if you find this video a little boring, so I apologize for that. Actually, I'm not in a mood to make a video, but I have to make this last video before getting a little break. You won't get a break. I will get a break. So, anyways, so calorific value. What is a calorific value? So, this you know basically, but we would just uh, study it from the book. We will just read it out from the book. Calorific value is what? It is the amount of heat produced by the complete combustion of unit weight of fuel. Right? Yes. So, uh, the amount of heat produced by the complete combustion of what of a unit weight of fuel so higher the calorific value higher is the amount of heat produced and higher is the amount of heat produced higher is the efficiency of the system Calorific value indicates the amount of heat available from a fuel. The greater available, the greater the calorific value, the larger is the ability to produce heat. It is expressed in calories per kilogram or kilocalories per kilogram. So mostly we'll be doing a, with bigger units are kilocalories per kilogram. So I told you the coal names. So over here, have a look. The anthracite coal has got the highest. So anthracite coal has got what? Has got the highest value of calorific value, which is what? 8,500. 8,500 kilocalories per kg. Also, its composition is given. The carbon composition is the greatest over here, having a 90% carbon, 3% hydrogen, uh, 2% oxygen and 5% ash. Similarly, they have got the bituminous coal. Bituminous coal, I told you, is again being used as well. So this has got a calorific value of 7600. 7600 is the calorific value and the carbon composition over here is a little lower, is 83%. Uh, then you have hydrogen is 5%. Oxygen 5%, 5.5 hydrogen and ash is 6.5%. Similarly, they have uh, written over here is the lignite coal. Lignite coal has got a value of what 5000 kilocalories per kilogram and the carbon composition over here is quite less it is 67 percent so I told you that it has to be at least the minimum it has to be 80 percent to be used as a fuel in the thermal power plant fine so which means that this cannot be used in a thermal power plant is that fine it is okay what do we have next so the next i talk about something you know just compiling this topic so heat requirement is the heading over here the most important requirement is to know how much energy is contained in the fuel of course the most important requirement for the fuel would be what you are using a fuel as uh, you know uh, the main thing is your fuel right for in the thermal power station so what do you have is you need to know what you need to know three important things about it how much energy is contained in the fuel the energy contained in the fuel its cost its quantity how much quantity will you require and its cost of course so these are the three important parameters that you need to know about what about the fuel that you are using the heat energy equivalent of one kilowatt hour of electrical energy is 860 kilocalories so I already have told this to you in the previous video that one kilowatt hour is 860 kilocalories which is 3412.14 3412.14 British thermal unit fine yes the quantity of fuel would be what in terms of the mass of the fuel this would be represented by mf the quantity of the fuel would be represented by mf mass of the fuel can be determined by knowing the energy content of the coal in terms of kilocalories per kilogram as the calorific value or the higher heating value 
right yes now other thing we have is the heat rate heat rate is what heat input required to produce so you have one thing that is the heat rate heat rate is what this is the heat input required to produce one kilowatt hour of electrical energy right and this we represent by q by a capital q this is known as the heat rate which is the heat input that is required to produce what one kilowatt of electrical energy the heat rate is calculated from the thermal efficiency of the system thermal efficiency would be what thermal efficiency eta would be the heat equivalent output q naught divided by the heat rate which is q right yes the amount of fuel required can be calculated by knowing the quantity of heat and the calorific value of the fuel so the quantity of heat to the calorific value would give you what would give you the mass of the fuel required right yes since the energy output of a thermal power station so over here q naught since the energy output is in terms of what electrical uh, uh, units that is kilowatt hours so the heat energy output is converted to equivalent uh, heat energy or equivalent. so you can do the convergence we've seen the convergence in the previous video so basically they talk about is that this q heat rate would be basically in in terms of the heat units joules etc but this q naught this is basically the electrical equipment this should be an electrical unit so you have to do the necessary conversions Similarly, if I talk about what, if we, if we talk about, we talked about the hydroelectric power station over there, we saw the hydro potential. Over here, we what do we have is we would talk about the enthalpy of the system, right? Entropy is not of our concern, that is basically the system's concern. Our concern is the enthalpy of the system. Over here, they have written is that atmosp at atmospheric pressure, water boils at 100 degrees, the heat energy required to produce 1 kilogram of water is this much 419 which is known as what 419 is the specific heat of one kilogram of water so i will write over here is an example so first i will write the specific heat of water and this is at 100 degree celsius is 419 kilojoules per per what per kilogram right yes and similarly then we have is the next is the latent heat of vaporization then i have is the latent heat and then again of water at 100, 100 degrees is 2257 2257 kilojoules per calories so what do i do is we add them together we add them together so this gives you what 2676 if you add the two this gives you 26 seven six now what does this mean uh, the specific enthalpy of the water is this much and the latent heat of vaporization is this much just give me a second uh, okay so this gives you this much two six seven six this would be what kilowatt seconds per kilograms because joule is equal to watt seconds right so this would be kilowatt seconds per kilogram right because joules is equal to watt seconds so i need it in uh, 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 kilowatt hours basically i need it in kilowatt hours so what do i do is i would do the conversion I would do the conversion and you knew the conversion from watt to kilowatt multiply divided by thousand second to the uh, second to hours you divide it by 3600 so you, you know the conversion basically this implies that the energy units the equivalent would be 2676 divided by 3600 3600 and this gives you what 0 0.74 this gives you 0 0.74 kilowatt hours per kilogram now what do i mean by this what have i written over here now why have i written uh, 100 degrees over here because we have to make steam from water and 100 is, a, uh, is the boiling point of water this 0.74 means what that one kilogram of water one kilogram of water when converted fully into steam would produce 0.74 kilogram uh, kilowatt hour 
this much of electrical energy units if one kilogram of water is fully converted into electrical energy right yes let me have a little operational analysis question for instance I write over here I have space over here example what do we have a uh, 100 megawatt power station uses a coal a calorific value is given 100 megawatt is the load right then the calorific value is given which is what 7000 kilocalories per kilogram uh, if the overall efficiency of the station is 30 percent uh, and the station is delivering 75% of the rated power 75% rated power so you can say that this is the load factor is 75% so what do you have determined the coal consumption per hour coal consumption per hour is unknown so p is 100 megawatt this is this this is this so first of all you find out the energy units so energy units you know from the formula is power into time or you could say the load factor into time as well so i would take this in as the maximum demand you could say if you're using that formula and then you have the load factor is for instance this much and time is this is on the yearly basis so i will take this as 8760 no no this is on per hour basis per hour basis so one so this comes out to be how much 70 5 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatt hours these are the number of units right yes then you have to this, this e means what electrical energy output and output over here we have mentioned by q naught so we have to convert the kilowatt hour into equivalent heat form so i would write over here q naught q naught would be what i would have to multiply it by 860 so 75 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 860 this gives me the equivalent heat output of the electrical so this gives me 645 into 10 to the power 5 645 into 10 to the power 5 kilo calories fine yes now we know the overall efficiency so we can find out the heat input as well overall efficiency is 30 percent so we can find out the heat input this implies that q would be equal to q naught which is 645 into 10 to the power 5 divided by eta which is 30 percent or 0 0.03 right 0 0.3 sorry so what does this come out to be 215 into 10 to the power 6 215 10 to the power 6 kilocalories this is your heat input so you've got your heat input now you can find your mass of the fuel so basically mass of the fuel was required and that is why i had to come so mass of the fuel is required so q is given which is 215 into 10 to the power 6 divided by the calorific value is 7000 and what do i have is 30714 30714.2 kilograms basically this is a uh, uh, better to uh, you know represent it in units of tons so i would write this is approximately equal to 31 tons one ton is thousand kilograms basically over here the coal consumption per hour which means the amount of fuel was unknown the mass of the fuel was unknown so for the mass of the fuel we have this formula q upon cv so we had cv but we did not have q now for q we use what formula we use the efficiency formula we had efficiency we had to find out q but we had we did not have q naught again so if we do not have q naught what do we have we can find it out from the equivalent electrical energy unit that is e in kilowatt hours right yes sir next example please what do the next example say a 70 megawatt coal fired 70 megawatt coal fired thermal power station uses coal of calorific value is 7600 calorific value this time is 7600 and then we, which is consumed at a rate of 0 0.55 kg 0 0.55 kg per unit this is the coal consumption if the station is working at a load factor of 60% load factor fld is 60 percent calculate the efficiency efficiency is unknown and the coal consumption per day is unknown all right let's get into it let's get into it what should we do first of all what should, so efficiency is unknown have a look we would require q naught will require q so q naught we can find out from the uh, 
from the what from the e right so first of all let's find out e so e is equal to the energy units or fld into maximum demand into time right so we are doing it per day so i would take fld into maximum demand into time is 24 hours fld is 0 0.60 multiply i will take the connected load as maximum demand 70 into 10 to the power 3 multiply 24 what does this come out to be 1.008 1.008 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours these are the units that are generated per day now for finding efficiency we find q naught by q so we can find out q naught from converting this one so q naught would be 1.008 into 10 to the power 6 multiply 860 so this would give me uh, where is it where is it uh, q naught is 866 0.88 into 10 to the power 6 kilocalories so this is the heat equivalent of the electrical now what can I have I can have I still want Q I still don't have Q right yes so Q I can find it from the mass of fuel per uh, uh, from this formula right because MF I can find out so Q would be the mass of the fuel multiplied by the calorific value. The mass of the fuel consumed is what? 0.55 kgs per kilogram. So the number of uh, uh, 0.55 kilograms per unit and the number of units are how much? This much. So, so this would give you the mass. This would give you the mass of it and then multiply it with the calorific value. So this gives you the heat input that is Q that is q is 7600 uh, so basically this thing they have done separately so what the final answer is 4213.44 into 10 to the power 6 kilo calories i hope you have understood the mass of the fuel is what 0.55 kg per kilowatt hour so the total kilowatt hours are uh, this much the total mass uh, would be the product of them and the calorific value multiplied multiplied would give you the q right yes so now what is unknown you have eta unknown so eta is what eta is q naught upon q so q naught is 866.8 in 10 power 6 q is 4213.44 uh, yes so this comes out to be uh, 20 point 20.57 very poor efficiency anyways so the mass of the fuel was also unknown so basically the mass of the fuel i would just write this over here mass of the fuel mass of the fuel is 0.55 multiplied by what multiplied by the kilowatt hours that are 1.008 into 10 to the power 6 this comes out to be where is it double five double four double zero double five double four double zero kilograms converted into tons ton is an appropriate unit this is just for one hour this is just for one hour if if this is for one hour double five double four double zero kilogram this is for one hour multiply it by 24 this is for one day or if i multiply it with eight seven six zero this would be the kilograms required for one year and then multiply it with the cost so how much money oh is a big amount anyways let's say one final example for the day a thermal power station experiences a maximum demand a maximum demand of how much uh, 50 megawatts maximum demand of 50 megawatts at a load factor of 40 percent uh, the efficiencies and efficiency of boiler turbine and generator are so efficiency of the boiler is 80 percent efficiency of the turbine is 85 percent efficiency of the generator is 90 percent the station consumes coal at a rate of 0.87 kilograms per kilowatt hours of electricity if the cost of the coal is 25,000 per ton 25,000 per ton is the cost 
Calculate the amount spent on coal annually. Amount spent on coal annually. So this is your unknown. Can you do it yourself? Let me do it. Let me do it. So what do you have is you can find out the electrical energy units consumed first. So E is equal to FLD into maximum demand into time. FLD is 40%, 0.4. Maximum demand is 50 megawatt. Time is what? Uh, annually? Uh, yes, calculate, calculate the amount cost spent annually. So 8760. So the number of units comes out to be 175.2 into 10 power 6. 175.2 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hours. Now, how much mass are they requiring? The mass of the fuel required is uh, mass of the fuel required is how much 0 0.87 kilograms per kilowatt so per kilowatt means what the total number of so total mass would be total mass would be 0 0.87 multiplied by total energy units so what do it, it comes out to be the total mass comes out to be 249 into 10 to the power 6 kilograms or write it in tons so this is 249 10 to the power 3 tons 249 into 10 to the power 3 tons this is the mass of the fuel required so what do you have what do you have this is the mass of the fuel required so next is what the cost per ton is given so multiply it total cost would be total tons 249 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by the cost per ton is 25 into 10 to the power 3 something in 10 to the power 6 huge amount huge corruption in this uh, particular organization because of these costs right yes very huge amount being spent on the fuel and uh, an, an equivalent huge amount goes into the pockets of the persons dealing with these calculations right yes sir so do check out the calculations for yourself do check out the calculations i will finish this video over here i hope the concept is clear this was a little boring video because i was not in a mood but as the time passed by i got into the mood right so the two formulas the two formulas are one is this one for this video and the second is this one for this video q naught is what the electrical the heat equivalent for the electrical output which means you would have to for q naught what would you have to do you would have to convert the uh, the the kilowatt hours into kilo calories and this q would already be in kilo calories right yes sir i finished this video over here the book has got a number of examples that are what examples 2.1 to 2.5 i will not do them they are just simpler examples you can do them by yourself if i uh, I would think about it if I wanted I would do it in the next video I don't need to do it basically they are just simple example to try them out by yourselves I'll see you in the next lecture very soon till then take care goodbye